Welcome to Electro Online. In order to understand photons better, we're going to now take a look at how X-rays are produced. After all, X-rays are photons as well. So, how do we produce X-rays? Well, what we do is we take, for example, a tube like this, we evacuate it, and we send electrons across at very high speeds from the cathode to the anode. We apply a very strong potential difference to give them a very hard, large acceleration. So by the time the electrons reach the anode, where they impact on the target, they will have energies of 60 to 80,000 electron volts. And so when they impact on the anode, the anode typically made either out of tungsten or molybdenum, and we'll see in just a moment why that is, then they'll produce x-rays. So x-rays will be produced from the impact of these electrons into the target, the anode. Now, the frequency of the, of the x-rays and the wavelength of the x-rays will depend upon the metal itself. So what's going on here? Well, there's two kinds of radiation coming from this particular event. The first radiation is what we see in the shape of a black, bo uh, black body curve, and this is what we call the bremsstrahling. And what that means is brem means breaking in German, and strahling means radiation. This is what we call the breaking radiation that was discovered in this particular type of experiment. And so where that comes from is as electrons keep streaming in, they're going to be impacting the first layers of the anode, and they're going to be deflected by the nuclei of the atoms in the anode. As they're being deflected, they're going to be slowed down. As they slow down, they lose energy. That energy then will be radiated in the form of what we call bremsstrahling, which is a form of X-ray radiation. But that's only going to be a low uh, intensity radiation, not what we need, for example, for medical purposes. Now the reason why they have these anodes here that are made out of molybdenum or tungsten is because they have certain energy levels that if one of these electrons is able to come in and knock an electron out of the innermost energy level, then the next electron then will fall down and take its place. So for example, let's say we have the nucleus right here. In the case of um, tungsten, I think the uh, did I write it down? Yeah, right here. It has atomic number 74, molybdenum has atomic number 42, so there would be 74 protons in the nucleus of tungsten. And so in the innermost energy level, if there's an electron there, and another electron comes in and is able to knock this one out of orbit, or out of that orbital, I should say, should really call it an orbit, of course. Then in the other level, the next level, an electron will fall down and take its place, and that causes a photon to be produced. The difference is that the energy difference between these two levels is so high that it can be as much as 59.3 kilo electron volts or 67.2 kilo electron volts. There's two particular jumps that are peculiar to tungsten that will cause then a photon to be ejected of those particular energies. And those energies then are associated with a, with a wavelength of between 20 to 100 uh, picometers, which is, a, which is therefore an X-ray at 59.3 or 67.2 kilo electron volts. So it sends two beams of X-rays. This would be the predominant one, and that would then be the, the X-ray level or the X-ray energy produced in this particular uh, X-ray machine. Now, for low-dose X-rays or lower-energy X-rays that have much lower energies, we use a metal called molybdenum because there the energy differences aren't as high. Notice there's only 42 protons in the nucleus, and so therefore it produces less energetic X-rays and less damaging to the body. These are typically used for mammograms. These are used for other kinds of things, such as taking pictures of bones and things like that. So we do have different reasons for building different kinds of X-ray machines. Now, again, the interesting thing is here's two different kinds of uh, x-rays that are produced. The first one is the bremsstrahling. So what happens is, for example, an electron, instead of being in a head-on collision with another electron, it will go ahead and move past the nucleus, but because of the interaction between the electron and the nucleus, this electron will change direction. Therefore, there will be a deceleration. The deceleration causes some radiation then to be emitted, and that radiation will be in the form of an X-ray or a high energetic uh, UV ray. And so most of them will, of course, bypass a collision with electrons, and therefore they will cause that bremsstrahling radiation. The other kind of radiation is where an electron comes in, strikes one of these electrons, knocks it away from the orbital, 
The one in the next level will jump down, of course, they will all come kind of cascading down, filling out the empty spots. But there's the highest energy difference right here between energy level two and energy level one that will produce one of these two particular jumps. And so they'll produce a jump of 59.3 kilo electron volts or 67.2 kilo electron volts. To find out what wavelength of radiation that is, we can then, of course, go to this equation. We can say that the energy is equal to h times the frequency, which is h times the speed of light divided by the wavelength, or the wavelength is equal to h c divided by the energy. So what wavelength corresponds to this particular x-ray? All right, so we have 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 for Planck's constant, that's joules times seconds. Multiply times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed of light, divided by 59,300 electron volts. And of course, we want to convert that to joules, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt. And when we do all that, we get the wavelength of the X-ray radiation that's produced in one of these X-ray machines. So that's 6.626 e to the 19 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 59,300 and divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus. And we have a wavelength of 20.95 nanometers. So just about 21 nanometers wavelength of x-ray radiation that we use for medical purposes when the target is, in this case, it would be tungsten. Notice our molybdenum. We have an energy of about a third, a little bit less than a third. So we have wavelengths of probably around 70 or so nanometers when we use this kind of x-ray machine. Again, here's an interesting concept. How do we produce these particular x-rays? We have electrons that then are targeting an anode, they collide, they're deflected and collide with the uh, atoms inside the target. That sudden deceleration of these electrons cause either a deflection, which causes the bremsstrahlung radiation to occur, which is a form of x-rays, low, low intensity x-rays, or we have electrons knocking other electrons out of place, other electrons falling down into this into this level and then releasing the energy difference right here and that's why we have these very two peaks, these high peaks of radiation that we use in our x-ray machines. Again, another look of how photons work in this case, in the case of production of x-rays.